okay uh, uh fine so we'll just start our session now so i'll just share my screen i hope all of you can see my screen yes sir yes yes okay. sir so yeah so today's session, we're going to take it on uh, Spear Deck. So uh, I hope you guys attended the previous session, uh, which was on week 10. And uh, I think Srikant took this session and he has discussed the concepts, right? So I hope all of you are uh, comfortable with week 10. Right. Have you guys finished watching the entire lecture? And did you try solving the practice and activity? Good morning, there's an activity. Yeah. Uh, okay, so you have. That's I have not attended, sir. Oh, okay, fine. All right, no problem. So uh, I want all of you to join here on this. Uh, uh, all you have to do is just type this join pd.com into your browser and use this code s x x u n c do not give any space in them in order to join here okay so i can see that nine of you have already joined here and sir i have watched all lecture week 10 which was provided in dashboard is it that will be enough or i have to watch the that morning session I think if you, I think the professor has really explained it well, so that will suffice the need. But if you see there are some concepts, like if you feel in any concept, you feel there is a need. So you can always revert back to the live session and just seek through the video, maybe uh, wherever you have a doubt and you can just, you know, see the explanation what uh, the other person is, or the other instructor is providing, right? That you can do. So if you're comfortable, that's perfectly fine. But wherever you feel there is a need, you can just go through that video and you know. Sir, I'm comfortable, just... but uh, I think uh, all concepts are jumbled up, <laughs> little bit confused only. Otherwise, uh, which concepts? Uh, every concept with uh, DFS and uh, BFS. Uh, uh, all concepts are clear, but uh, when I try to revise all concepts, uh, they get jumbled up. Okay, <laughs> so actually, maybe you I have need to... a, actually, a brief history, brief type in one page, uh, one correct, page. Correct, correct. correct, you yourself is telling like what will be the solution for it. So you can just make a note of this because that will be uh, something really useful when you are doing by your own, right? And that will be your own handy notes. Yes, actually, be... we are not getting enough time. Uh, revision session, if correct, there correct. will be. Yes, sir. Right, I can uh... understand that. And uh, how is your preparation for quiz two going on? Uh, sir, that, that's that the problem. In week ten, we have spended a lot of time, sir. Okay. So we are not getting any. Money. Yes, sir. Any we are not getting time. time to revise, sir. Okay. Fine. I think tomorrow you have first revision session. That's in the evening, I guess. So maybe you can just. Uh, so you can just see this way. Like uh, tomorrow, till tomorrow, you can start, I mean, try to finish week 10. And you have a revision session in the evening. So you can start uh, attending that. I mean, you can attend that revision session and start focusing on your quiz too. Then. And yes, uh, com coming to week 11. So week 11 is again, the deadline is on Wednesday. So you will have two days again after maybe like Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday, like three more days. I think that should be enough for completing that part. So, uh, sir, week right. seven, uh, sir, it will be better if you uh, dead, uh, deadline be shifted by two days because, sir, I have to travel about 200 kilometers. Uh, so, about three days gone without any studying, sir. Sir, sir, week 11 deadline is 25th, not Wednesday. Yes, sir, 27th. <laughs> okay, so yeah. uh, then, then it should be fine to all of you, right? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay, so from Wednesday onwards, you can start focusing on your uh, quiz too, preferably, right? So you see, uh, I want all of you to join here and I can see like we are like 35 of us here, but only 22 of you have joined. So you can just join here and participate. So, you know, then, then, then there will be some sort of learning. 
Uh, actually, sir, I'm working professional and I have joined through my mobile phone. So right now I'm in the office. I won't be able to. That's join. okay. That's okay. Oh. Yeah, that should be okay. So. Okay, sir. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, no problem. That should be okay. So all of you can just simply, I mean, just go to joinpd.com and use this code. What you see here on the screen, that is S X X U N C. Do not give any space in them to join this. So you can start. We can just start in another one minute our session. Sir, so week 11 is harder? No, no, these weeks are actually not harder. If the concepts are clear, you get direct questions. There is nothing hard here. Unlike the previous weeks, like calculus, I would say. Like this will be very straightforward. You know how to solve this. That is all you have to know. And I think these concepts you have learned in CT as well, or you're going to learn in CT. It's either way, but it's fine. The, they're they're in mixing, sir. Yeah, so there is some sort of intermixing, but here you will see that mathematical aspects of it. So, but it's actually, if you were to ask me week 10 and 11 are very easy. And this is like the scoring weeks. And uh, as far as your end term is concerned, this is some topic which we are not testing you on. So you can expect more number of questions from these weeks, right? So you can strategize your, pre and this, this is very important in terms of, because uh, why am I telling this week is, I mean, these weeks are important, like 10 and 11 is because there's like, in terms of uh, scoring marks, I'm telling you, because you would see these questions are very direct, right? Once you know, okay, this is, this is what algorithm I have to use, or this is what I have to use for a particular, you, you, you also will be able to figure out when you're reading a question. So it will be very easy and straightforward. All you have to know is, is just know the concept. Okay. But, but in terms of pseudocode, it gets a little bit difficult. <laughs> fine so well that's aspect of ct but not in maths you will not have uh, pseudo codes here so it's fine uh okay so we can just start our class now uh, you can see we are like 40 plus but still 32 of you have joined uh, meanwhile you can join the class so we can just start here so my name is vicky kumar sharma and i'm a maths course instructor so we are going to discuss some questions on graded assignment type questions okay so this will be more like that. So, and not specifically like that, but yeah, some of, some of the questions will be, uh, you know, like that. Okay. So just to refresh you uh, guys, like how we take this session. So this is something we did up to week four. If, if I have to recollect after that, we stopped doing these kind of sessions, like using peer deck. So just to recollect, recall everything. How do you join? You have already joined. And for each question, we give like two to five minutes. And we'll, I'll give you time for solving a question, like two to five minutes and depending on the question. And you will be given a time you can solve and you can submit your answers here. And that will be as a record to us here. Uh, and we can also see some of your uh, friends or colleagues or whoever's response as well, like what response they are giving. But of course, the response will be identical. Uh, it will not be shown on the screen, but it will be in our database. Uh, so this is how it is going to happen. And after the submission of this, uh, I might ask any of you randomly to raise your hand and you know you can discuss this question. And I myself will give you the explanation for that particular uh, uh, for that particular question. So that's how it's going to be. So it's going to be more like interactive, uh, and will and we will also be able to appreciate the other people's response. For an example, I have my own way of. Uh, you know, giving the answer, like I have one methods, but when we are discussing with each other, so we figure out like there are some other ways also in which we can do, right? So we can see which is the most optimum one and we can just adopt. Okay? So we'll go that way. So fine. So this is how it looks like when you're using a desktop. So this is how you will see a question and this will be the question asked and this will be the portions of portions for answering the question. So this is how it looks like. And uh, some of you are using mobile phone as well. So this is how it looks like in mobile view. So the question will be displayed here and portion for answering will be at the bottom. You can see here, right? So you can do this way. So just to have a sample question uh, so that, you know, before going to the main question, there's just a test problem. 
just give a response here so that we can see how does it actually look like okay so here there is a graph and the question is how many vertices are there in this graph so quickly just give your response seven sir yeah seven sir okay so you don't have seven. to tell me yeah you don't have to tell me you can just simply uh, write your responses there and it will display to me here so this is how it looks like uh, sir uh, full screen the google chrome sir by pressing f11 hello sir good evening i think it's not happening here uh, if you are using a laptop keyboard then press fn fn uh, fn keyboard then f11 Hello, ah, right. Thanks. Am I ordered? Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Sir, sir, yesterday Venkatesh sir has explained. Uh, uh, yesterday was the first session regarding week ten. It was open session, so he explained all the concepts. Remaining uh, three concepts were remaining yesterday. Yes, yes, I spoke I to him. Uh, yeah, yeah. BFS, 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 BFS and, and uh, logical sorting. Yeah. See, yes, yes. I'm, I'm very much aware of it. Yes. Yeah. So, sir, uh, my concern is, uh, can you teach all three topics and then start the solve with the session if possible? Otherwise, it's fine. Uh, it's fine. No problem. I'll go. The... I'll go in my flow. Don't worry. So, I'll just start with the simple graph questions. Then we'll go with the BFS, BFS, and then we can go with the topological sequence. Okay. Okay. Fine, sir. Yeah. And I'll also have a question on vertex coloring on something. So we can just see that how much we have learned. Okay, so that's how we'll do. So no worries, we'll cover those concepts here. I sure, already spoke sure, to him sure. like what was covered. Yeah, fine. So you can see here, this is how we get the response, right? So most of you are telling answer as seven, some of you are giving answer as 10. Uh, I don't know why, but you just have to count the number of vertices and give the answer. That was the thing, okay? So you see this, uh, before going further, so uh, as some as somebody yesterday who attended this session, they were telling like, okay, these three topics were left, which I'll cover here. I'll go formally into that more deeper. But before going there, I just want you to give, I want, you know, to all of you to be on the same page uh, and orient yourself along with me in this particular session, because I have designed in that way. So first we can just simply start with the, some facts about, you know, graph vertices and degree, okay? So you would have seen some questions on, you know, in your, uh, uh, when, when you would have seen the lecture, these are something fact, which you would have discovered by yourself, or you would have even seen in the practice assignment question, something like this, okay? So you see any vertices in a graph, having N vertices can have a maximum possible degree of N minus one. I hope all of you agree with this. Let us consider a three vertices. Now just imagine, now just think of how many, what will be the maximum number of any, uh, what will be the maximum number of degree for any particular vertices or any vertices? It is going to be N minus one, right? So this is one fact that we can take from here. Uh, also, you would notice that the sum of the degree of all the vertices will always be even. This is another fact that you have to keep it in your mind. Okay, the sum of the degree of all the vertices will always be even. If two vertices in a graph have n minus have degree n minus one, it means there will be no vertex with degree one. Okay, so you can just try to give me a counter example, and you can just try to disprove this thing. Uh, I'll be really happy for that. But these are certain facts that we can, which you can, you know, which you can think of. Yeah. Sir, if we have just two vertices. Yes. Then in that case, you know, you will have both of them with uh, one degree. You know, which is n minus one. Okay. And uh, if you take, oh, okay, there will be nothing else. All right, okay. Right. Yeah. <laughs> there will not be a third one. So yeah, got it. It's good that you're thinking that way. So well, you can always think of and you know try to convince yourself yes that these are certain facts that we can observe from the graph, right? So there's something we have to know. Okay. So based on these three facts, 
Okay. Also, I sir, have a small question. All yes. vertices cannot have distinct degree, sir. All vertices cannot have distinct degree. Yes, sir. Uh, this we'll, is also... we'll come to that. Okay, we'll come to that whether how far that is right or wrong. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. Hmm. Sir, I'm sorry to disturb you, sir. Sir, I have a small doubt, sir. Okay. Sir means I have taken two subjects, sir, after the quiz one, and but it is showing in the quiz two four subjects. It is, it is showing, sir. For your quiz two hall ticket. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In the hall ticket, sir. Okay, you can just write to the support once. It's most likely what, that what hall ticket. Uh, sir, actually, it is. Uh, I have chosen two subjects, but it is showing in the four subjects in the hall ticket, sir, for the twentieth November quiz. Uh, you can just write to the support; they will help you out. Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Thank you, sir. Okay. Fine. So, having known these three facts, let us try to attempt this particular question. Now we have uh, a graph. Sir, graph. Sorry to interrupt in between. Now, uh, sir, are these okay. sessions considered as graded or not? Uh, sorry, these sessions are considered as what? Graded or not? Answering uh, this question, sir, considered as no, 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 it's not like that. It's just for the practice purpose. All right, sir. Thank you, sir. Hmm. Now consider. Now let's say we have a graph G with vertices A, B, C, D, and E, and we write down the degree of all the vertices in an order A, B, C, D, and E. Okay. Now, which of the following is the possible listing of the degrees? Okay. So now this is the questions. Now we just learned three facts about you know the vertices, uh, you know about the edges and the uh, graph in general, a uh, degree or uh, degree of a vertices. So based on those three facts, can you think of which among them are right? And do not post your answers in the chat window. Uh, just give your responses here so that you can. Just take two minutes. Sir, the options are allowing to select only any one of them. There is a radio radio button actually. Okay, uh, student choose an option. Okay, so there is only one option. Yeah, there is a facility to choose only one option. More than one, uh, we are not able to select. Oh, only Fine. one. Just right, right. Just select one, and let's see whether that is right or wrong. Let's see whether the other one is. We can discuss more on that. Whichever is the most appropriate option, just select. So as of now, some 20 responses we got.
Okay. So do any of you need uh, more time or should we discuss the solution? No, sir. So I guess like uh, nobody is responding with some extension of time. So we can just discuss the solution. So could anybody uh, like to uh, take this chance to explain this? Yes, sir. Please. Yes, sir. This appears to be a multiple uh, correct uh, question. Okay, so we can look at that part. Uh, Rithik, yes, uh, sir. can you? Yes, Rithik, please go ahead. And uh, as you have said, sir, number of odd degree uh, should be even. So B option is incorrect. And number C of option, odd degree? What was the number what of is the odd degree? Number of odd degree vertices should be even. No, it's not like that. So some of the degree of all the vertices will always be even. Oh, that, right? That's also one fact. That's in uh, lecture. So I told about that in lecture. Yes, sir. Correct, uh, Dr. Nazar. If it is odd degrees, that will be having a hard number. It will not have any Makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yes. So B option is incorrect. Also okay. C option incorrect because there are five vertices. So maximum degree has to be four. So five degree is impossible okay, for yeah. a vertex. If it is because simple it will have graph. in minus one degree. Yes, sir. If it is simple graph, then five degree is not possible. Yeah. And A option is also incorrect because uh, there is two max, uh, max degree and one pendant. So it is also impossible correct. because if two vertex have max degree, Mm -hmm. So one uh, every vertex has to be attached with that two vertex. So correct, every correct. vertex will have at least two degree. Correct. And only D option is left, and D option has no issue uh, like this. And we can also verify by making graph. Yeah. So, so do all of you understood this, or do any of you have any other way of solving this? Sir, please explain the difference between A and D, sir. A and D? Yes, sir. Okay. So, go with this third fact. If two vertices in a graph have degree n minus 1, it means there will be no vertex with degree 1. Okay, sir. Right? Yes, sir. So, this is n minus 1, this is n minus 1. Right? But yes. still we have some vertices with degree one, which is shown here, which is incorrect, right? And therefore D and D satisfied all the conditions. And you can also verify by making the graph as Rithik was telling, right? Okay, sir, thank you. So let's just discuss this. So step, like I'll just discuss how it is done once, like once formally, let's do it. And then we can go to the next question. Now, any vertex in a graph having N vertices can have a maximum possible degree of N minus one. So as Rithik was telling, so it is going to be something four. Therefore, the option C can be ignored because it is showing that one of its vertices is uh, with degree five and it's a simple graph which is not going to happen, right? So option C is ruled out there. And as again, Rithik pointed out why option B was incorrect because some of all, uh, some of degrees of all vertices will always be an even, right? And therefore, when you add these things, you're getting an odd degree, which is incorrect. Well, Rithik was telling it in a different way, but as per our fact, what we had shown here, as per that fact, we can go, then we can say that, yes, this option B is also incorrect. And if we go with the option three, you see that if two vertices in a graph have N minus one degree, uh, not option three, in fact, option A, it means three will have no vertex with degree. There will be no, so it means there is there is going there is going to be no vertex with degree one, right? So if vertex A and B has a degree four, right? So you cannot have any other vertices with degree one, right? So you can see from this graph itself. Now you see this uh, vertex A has four degrees and vertex B has four degrees, right? And now if this is the case, and when you try to draw the graph, you would see that none of these vertices will have degree one. Right, so you can try making this graph and see. And when you go with the next option, that is option number four, which is satisfying all the conditions. So now if you see this, now what does it shows? Now vertex A, B, C, D, and E are given. And as per the degrees, what it is mentioned, so we can just write it down and just get it verified. Like 
if you see if you if you add all of these vertices it's going to be even so that is one condition satisfied and the maximum number is n minus 1 so well uh, maximum number of degree uh, for any particular any particular uh, any vertices is going to be n minus 1 which is 4 and if it is repeating twice then there is no vertices with 1 well that condition is not fulfilled here so you can see that option d is satisfying all the condition and which you can even verify by drawing it okay so this is how you solve these kind of questions fine okay so now before going further i i i as for uh, what i have seen from the previous uh, live session what Srikanth has taken in which he has already discussed this adjacency matrix and all this. So what is this adjacency matrix? So a matrix with rows and the columns are labeled with the graph vertices and all the entries is either one or zero. Okay. So if there is an edge between two vertices, you mention it as one. And if there is no, uh, if there is no, if there is no edges connecting two vertices, then you mention it as zero. That's it. So then how do we do this? So consider this graph that is a b c d and e so you can see this all these vertices are given which is connected by an edges now we are trying to draw the edges in symmetric for this, okay so now you see this how do you represent that so you mention the same vertices a b c d e and a b c d e now you can note this from a to b there is an edge right so from a to b there is an edge connecting these two vertices so you can see this it is mentioned at one right so likewise, we can see there is an edge between A to C. So you see that A to C, there is an edge and therefore this is mentioned at one. And similarly, A, there is an edge between edge connecting two vertices, AD. So you can again see that uh, this is shown here with one. And similarly, A and E is connected, which is shown here, right? So now if you want to count the number of degrees, like what is a degree of A, all you have to do is just count the number of uh, you just have to you just have to add this first row. So if you if you want to count if you want to you know uh, find out what is the degree of uh, vertices A. So all you can do is you can just add these first row. So you see this zero plus one plus one plus one plus one, which makes it four, right? Or you can add the first column also. You will still get the same, right? So you know this is how we draw the adjacency matrix, uh, and this is for undirected graph this is something we have to make a note of okay so what more thing we can notice from this uh, adjacency matrix is you notice this this is a symmetric right don't you think this is a symmetric matrix because if the you see this upper triangle which is formed by this diagonal is same as the lower triangle right and it's forming an asymmetric right so it is a symmetric matrix so whenever you have an undirected graph right so you see the adjacency matrix are symmetric matrix. Okay. Okay. So now having known this, let's try to attempt this particular question. The maximum number of non-zero entries in adjacency matrix of a simple graph having five vertices can be. So it's a quick question to all of you. Just try attempting, attempting this question. Maximum number of non zero entries. 20s or 20? Just put your answers in the response. Section. Okay, so do any of you need more time for solving this? No, sir. No, sir. Oh. 
Fine. So we can just see our what, what are the popular responses for this. So most of you are giving answer as 20, and some of you are giving answers, and the next popular answer is 25, then 15, 5. So let's see this. So whoever want to discuss this can raise your hand. Can I, sir? Not uh, okay. Uh, who is this? Jivraj? Ajay, sir. Ajay? Okay, fine. Yeah. So, as uh, the question is asking maximum number of non zero entries, uh, and we are given with the five vertices. Okay. So, as we know, there is no self loop or self as uh, condition will be there because it's a agency okay. matrix. So, there will be no self loop or self as is will be there. So, if I eliminate the all principal diagonal element with the zero, then remaining okay. I can fill with the one. So, Five into five matrices in matrix we have 25 elements so if i remove all diagonal elements i will left with 20. so it seems like all are connected to each other it's a perfect adjacent matrix yeah so it's a complete graph yeah complete graph yes sir, may I answer? yes yes please sir actually i might contradict my answer uh, sir, if there, uh, if there is a possible graph without any edges and uh, the maximum number of non-zero entries would be Uh, okay, come again. 20. Uh, sir, um, maximum number of non zero entries. Sorry, sir, I got the question wrong. Okay. Okay, fine. So we can just discuss this now as. Uh, sir, I think he is using elimination option. There are all correct, all correct, and correct. last one is even. Okay. Fine. So let's go with the solution for this particular thing. Now consider there are five vertices that is A, B, C, D, and E. Now, if we have an edge between every pair of vertices, then we will have the maximum number, maximum non-zero entries in that adjacency matrix, right? Then itself, like if if all vertices is connected with every other vertices, then itself we can, then we will have the maximum number of non-zero entries in an adjacent symmetry, right? So one simple, simple example is shown here. Now you see this, A is connected with B, C, E, and D. And similarly, B is connected with all other vertices. E is connected with all other vertices and C is connected with all other vertices. But note that A is not connected to itself because it's a simple graph, right? So how many then, so what possibly, if you are to draw the adjacency matrix for this, this is something going to look like this, right? A itself is not connected to A, so that's zero. A is connected to B, which is one, and A is connected to C, D, and E, so it's mentioned as this thing. Likewise, you can think of others, and you will see that the maximum number of non-zero entries in this adjacency matrix is what? It's like, it's like phi cross five minus this diagonal element, right? So this is five. So that's something going to be 20, right? So that's something shown here. So it's same thing, uh, what I have just explained, that this is how you get the total number of non-zeros entries is going to be, okay? Can we also think about it as every edge will have two entries. So for five uh, vertexes, you can have 10 edges. And since for every edge, you have two entries of so 10 into two is 20. Huh, you can think that way as well. Yeah. Okay. So fine. Now let's go to the main thing. Like what was something not done last time with something we'll do it here. So first of all, what is a BFS tree? So uh, we must understand that, uh, you know, like uh, we are aware of what B I assume that you have seen the lecture and you know, and we are coming to this. So first of all, like what do we, what do you, what do you really, really mean by this BFS and DFS, right? So it is just an strategy to explore a graph, okay? So BFS is one of the strategy to explore and graph and DFS is another strategy to explore and graph, okay? So what do you do in BFS is, it is an, a strategy to explore the graph label by label, okay? So this is what you do in BFS. 
and dfs itself says like it is depth first search so you know it's something like you know you are uh, even you would have seen it professor explaining that you know when you are when you are searching something right on the google so what do you do you you find search something then you get the link then you click on the link and then you get into the another link and then you what you just come back from there right so this is what you do in dfs but in bfs what what is it it's you go level by level right so this is what it happens so well you can see the lecture it is very well explained what i am going to tell you here is how do you really draw the bfs tree and dfs tree when a given graph is given uh, when a graph is given and the vice versa when a bfs tree is given and a dfs tree is given then how will the graph look like like what will be the possible graphs so we can just look it in uh, we can just look into those two uh, aspects and i'll come to these facts in a in a while so uh, i'll just share my screen uh, uh, not share my screen but i'll take you to the one note and just try to explain you something there and then we can I'll come back to that page okay so before going to this uh, how do you do this so i'll just erase these parts as well this is something i have used it to explain before so i can just keep this aside and this question is something i have taken from uh, uh, you know this uh, practice assignment question so we can just come to this part we can understand this what is this forward edge backward edge and you know what is uh, other type of edges those are like tree edges right so these kind of things will come come in a while but first for, first of all how do we draw a bfs tree and dfs tree right so let me give you an example here so let me say this is a tree a b i'll just draw this and we can just draw the bfs and dfs tree for this you know okay say this is connected to this okay let's say this graph is given to us right and we are asked to find out what is a bfs tree so this is something we are not doing right now uh the question is a graph g is given below suppose let's say first bfs okay suppose bfs is performed from performed from you give one source node so i say let's say node is a okay and let's explore uh, you know the vertices in an alphabetical order that is something we are uh, i am telling it okay so let's explore the vertices in an alphabetical order and then let's try to make the bfs tree for this so now let's say this is my graph g and i'm trying to draw what i'm trying to draw this bfs tree okay so let's try to do this so what you do is if you would have seen the lecture what professor does is he basically he explores he first takes the source node and he explores that right so when he takes so what you do is like in bfs you take the source node let's say our source node given here is a and then you explore the source node let me give one more edge here connecting this in this fashion okay or maybe not here just leave it as it is so now uh, now since we are exploring a so we will be visiting whichever is the connected edges right so which are uh, connected vertices so which are those which are connected b c d yes b so as we have to go in an alphabetical order so we'll just go in an alphabetical order b c and b. d right now since i am exploring in it an alphabetical order so i'll be going with b then c and then d right so you see what is happening here it's going label by label first what did i do i just made a queue over here so what am i doing is i can just just show it here how it is happening so first i am exploring a and in the when i when i am exploring a i come across these vertices that is b c and d i am done with a now what am i doing i am exploring b so when i explore b which all vertices i'll be able to cover d and a a and d right which are already covered right so 
A and D, which is already visited, right? So forget about them. Now come to C. Mm -hmm. Now what about C? From C, where all, which are the things you can visit when you're A exploring and C? E. A and E. A and E. But you notice that A is already explored, right? Or like A is already visited, so we cannot go back there. So we can go to E. So well, I cover E here, right? Now what? Uh, so we are done with this B, we are done with this C. Now we are going to do the next thing that is D, right? E so sir, what we, will, we will also up, uh, append a Q. Q by uh, E will get added after this. Correct, like, yes. So appending part, yes, that, that is definitely right. So when you are doing this C, so I'll append this Q and what do I, what do I get? I get E, right? Thanks mm -hmm. for correcting me here. So I did, I'm done with the C, exploration of C is done. Now I'm exploring D. And when I explore D again, which B all and vertices I'll be visiting? B and F and G, right? So I'm, but I'll have to check which all are one which is not visited, right? So if I'm at D, I can see that E is already visited. All I'm left with F and G, right? So this is what happening. So this is F and the next is G, right? G. Now what? The Q. Append them in the queue. So what do you do here? You just write down F and G and I'm done with D. Now what you will do? Come to E part. Now, because we are going in an alphabetical order, remember? So now we'll go with the E. So E, where all it can go? When we are C, exploring D. E, which all vertices you will be visiting? C, D, G. This is already covered. But it is already covered, right? It is already yes. uh, visited. So E is done. What about F? Covered done. Done. Everything. Again done with F, again done with the G. So what you get over here is your BFS. Okay. So I'll take one more example to discuss this. But you notice one thing. All that we have to notice from here is uh what I can tell you from this is Sir, what BFS do you notice that? could be different, no, also. Or it Sorry? will be always be same. BFS tree. It depends like what condition we are telling. Over here, I told that, you know, you perform a BFS tree from the node A. When you change the node, it will vary. And that if is one way. And, node A. Uh, so if you are not, let's say you are fixing node A, and then I'm saying that you, you can randomly choose it in your way you want. Okay. And not in an alphabetical order, then it is going to vary. Okay. okay. So but over here, I'm telling that alphabetical order, it will always be same. Everyone yes, yes, the yes, same. Yes, yes, yes. So okay, okay. sir. Thank you. Uh, so, sir, actually, I just want to in depth search. We we get to know some meaning from the word depth search. We are going into, but breadth breadth search. Breadth search. Okay, okay. So you don't get that meaning as such here, but it's fine that this is what it actually means. Okay. Sir, okay. if the graph is already a tree, then you will get the same structure once again for BFS, right? Like Again, like it depends, like what condition we are telling, like how you are going to explore. Isn't so, it? for instance, if we got this BFS tree, if we do another BFS on the same tree, then we'll get the same tree once again, right? Uh, yeah, you can say that. But again, if I if I say that, okay, the condition for exploring this is varying then you might get a different tree. for an example when you're exploring a then of course uh same. acd yeah yeah it's going to be same actually but again you see this uh it's uh you, actually it is going to be same uh sir, for this particular node is selected, how can it be same sir sorry yeah of course the diff if, if the node is different then yes it is going to be different but fixing okay. node A and then, you know, you're, you're saying that perform the BFS tree for this. Correct. Then correct. it is going to be similar. If we fix node A, then yes, then it will be safe. And right. it is alphabetical order. So then the source yeah. node. Uh, yeah, alphabetical is also necessary. Otherwise, we yeah, can otherwise you can go D. B, C, D, anywhere you can move after A. Uh, and uh, this E vertex will be associated with D. Hmm. So... This is one thing, like if you are coming to this part, like if you are trying to draw the BFS tree for this in an alphabetical order, or let's say non-alphabetical order, it's going to be still same when your node is A, right? Or can you uh, just give me some other? It will be same, I think. The sir, I, it will be, be different. Sir. One of the options, sir, but okay, so let's do that. Let's do yes, that. Sir. I'm going to A. 
now I'm exploring this in a different fashion, but I'm doing the BFS search for this BFS tree itself. Okay, but I'm not fixing it like in you get you are free to take it in any random way. Okay, so if I if I choose D fine. Yes, yeah, so uh, from Q A I can D. go to which all places like again, I'll just make the queue over here, right? Yes, I'll just sir. try to do this so that you know, we understand this better. So I'm visiting. I'm exploring D. A. When I explore A, I visit which all things? Let's say D, C, I'm changing B. my order. D, C, B. B. Okay, I'm not going in an alphabetical order. So what happens? I visit D, I visit C, and then I visit B, right? Now what happens? What will happen? Now I'm done with B. Now if I visit B, now if I explore D, which all vertices I'll be visiting? F and G. F and G. F and G, right? So, you know, sir, E will be also, e, e also, E will also, sir. No, but you're doing for this, right? Now, this is our new graph and we are doing the BFS okay, for this okay. graph. Okay, we forget about this part. That was his question. That is why we are trying to draw. Okay. Fine. Or let's change this order. Let's take it as GF. Right? Okay, so he was think... saying to draw BFS of this BFS tree on. Yes, right? yes, yes, yes. That is what he meant. Then it is actually going to be same. Mm -hmm. Fine. You can see it. You can just try to draw this. It's going to be same. All right. So now you see this. This is how you get the BFS tree. Now what we have to notice something that we have to notice. Okay. Now this is my original graph and this is my BFS tree. Now look, notice how many edges we did not cover. Now how many edges does this graph have? One, two, three, four, five, six, right? So six edges is enough to minimally, minimally connect this graph, right? Minimally yes. connect all these edges, isn't it? Yeah. Right? But in original graph, how many edges did we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So over here we had ten. Okay. So now notice, notice that if this is my BFS tree, and if I ask you to revert this back, okay. Now, if I have to, if I have, to, if I tell you, okay, this is my BFS tree, which among the following could be the graph of this BFS tree? You understand? Like this is one question which I'm trying to say. Okay, then how do you actually solve that? Okay, so now notice that when questions like this comes, then what happens? You see this A, B. So A, when you are exploring A, so you see this. Call this at call this at level zero. Okay. Yes, Ritik. Uh, sir, is it a uh, hundred percent possible to convert a BFS tree to a graph? Means uh, uh, the graph from which this BFS tree derive. No, there, no, no. You cannot exactly draw the original graph. Oh, the multiple graph will be there. Yeah, multiple graph will be. There. But we we could say that this is a possible graph. This is the possible graph. That is something you can see. So you see that this is something level have drawn. Now say this this A is at level, uh, maybe not this level. I should not make it here, but maybe let's just make it here so that we understand. Okay. So call this as level one, level zero. You see all these are at level two, right? Sir, I think because so when we were started ex from level one. Okay, fine. So let's go with <laughs> level one itself. And level two. So now what is happening is what am I trying to do is when I'm exploring A and I'm considering this as level one and in BFS tree, you do what level by level, right? So when I'm exploring B, which all vertices I'm visiting B, C, D, right? So these vertices, I call it as level two, right? And from D, you see that you are exploring this F and G and from C, you are exploring this E. So you see this, this is like next level thing, right? So this is coming at level three, right? So what we notice over here is, you see this in BFS tree, what all things are permitted? You can have, you can have edges in the same level, same level in the original graph. Well, this is one statement which I'm making. So let's see how is that happening. So you can have an edges in the same level in the original graph. For an example, 
Now look at this. If this is my level one and level two, and which are these level? Level two. Let me go with the level two. Okay. Now are C and D connected? Forget about that. C and D are not connected. Look at this. Even B C is not connected. Forget mm -hmm. about them as F G. Look at this F and G, right? F and G are connected, right? They are connected by this edge, right? F G. But this is something not shown in B F S three, right? So can I say this statement is right? You can have an edge in the same level in the original graph, right? So can we take this as a point, all of you? Yes, sir. Yes. Right. So we can have this, right? So if I'm trying to draw now, if I say, okay, this is your BFS tree, draw the original graph. So this is one possible way. I can connect FG. I can connect EF, right? I can connect BC. I can connect CD because at the same level, I may have this. edge right so this is one thing that i have to notice another thing you can have an edge between i and i plus 1 level okay so if what do you really mean by this if if i say this is my level i and this is my level i plus 1 okay so you can actually have an edge between them or you can call this as i and this as i plus 1 so you are allowed to have an edge between these two level okay so now how is that making sense now let's see with the original graph over here okay so now uh, can you give me one example where you have an edge connecting level 2 and level d and e d and e ha yes. so now look at this d and e are connected right d and e are connected in the original graph but they are at two different level right but still they are connected so this is something allowed in bfs you notice this when you are drawing when you when you draw the bfs tree this can also happen right so what what can happen at the same level you may have an edge in the original graph or one level difference so basically i and i plus 1 level they can have an edge between them that right? this is something i can say for surety right but you can never have an edge between level i and i plus 2 or more you can never have that this is something we have to understand all right so for an example because if that is going to happen then you know this is actually violating this bfs search uh, uh you know uh, the qy thing what we were doing okay so now this is something we have to understand from here so now having known this now quickly let's look into this part I have one so example i of and i plus 1 possible but i and i plus 2 3 4 5 is not is not possible right it's not possible in graph of bfs tree in the graph of a bfs tree yes. so having known this let's try to attempt this question this is one end term exam question okay there is something one question was given like this if the bfs tree of a graph is shown below now this is the bfs bfs tree is given okay choose the option which may represent the original graph so there is which may represents the original graph right so you notice so could you tell me which among them could be right multiple correct sir ha huh, please go ahead tell me so how many levels we have we have five levels five levels right okay so now how do you solve this we just uh, convinced ourselves that you can have an edges at the same level and one level above or below right agree 2 3 4 option 2 3 4 and correct option 2 3 4 option 3 okay so let's look into this part so first let's go with the option a so maybe i'll just zoom this option 2 3 4 yes so now could you tell me uh, okay first of all uh, let's look into this part why is option 1 incorrect can somebody tell me 1 to 8 1 to 8 exactly and now look at 10 10 also how many levels it has now this is at level 2 and this is at level 4 so it's like level i plus 2 right which is not permitted in bf right so this is incorrect 
right? So this is gone because of this particular reason that you cannot have an edge between one to eight. What about option two? Is this correct, incorrect? It is correct, sir, because there are edges. Incorrect, sir. I and I or I, I and I plus No, one. no. Look at this. There is an edge between nine and eleven, but there is no edge here. No edge here. I mean, all these edges must have in the original graph, right? This these are the tree edges, isn't it? So these tree edges are the core of your original graphs. So these edges must be present in your original graph. Okay. So you see this, there is an edge between nine and eleven, right? Yes, but it is something not shown in this option too. Therefore, this is wrong. What about option three? Uh, that's three right, sir. So option is correct, sir. Three is option three is correct. Yes, sir, three is correct. Yes, sir. Sir, it three cannot is be correct. correct. Four is wrong again. It okay. cannot be okay. correct. Four is wrong. Okay, the person who is telling it is, correct. Correct. it is not correct. Can you tell me the reason? Yeah, uh, the reason I'm saying it is not correct is because if you are going via BFS, right? So you go to zero, then one, two, and three. And then since one is listed first, you will go into this uh, like uh, children of one or go to the next level of one. So one is connected to four, but one is not connected to five. Ideally, if it had been correct from one, we should have gone to both four and five. Okay. And then for two, because five was already there, then from two, we would have gone to six and from three, we would have gone to seven. No, from how, how can you say from three, you could have gone to seven, right? Yes, that is so. I I I I come. I go to zero. Then I go to one, two, and three. And now okay. because I went to one first, I'm assuming the for the next level, which is third level, I'll go to I'll go to the nodes which are connected. Okay, so to just one. a minute. I'll try to draw this. Okay, let's see if we get the same tree or not. Okay, so from but I think it's BFS. It's BFF. BFS. Okay, so not let's, BFS. let's try to draw this. So it it is zero, and then you go to what? One. This is BFS, right? So this is you can go to one. You can go two. to two. You can go to three. Correct. All now you are connected. Now you go to, go four. to the children of one. Uh -huh. So from so there from you, one, go you can go to four, four and five, five, right? Yes. Right. I can go to four, five. Yes. Yeah, but in in the in the graph yeah. original question, there is no yeah. connection between one and five. Yeah. Right. Okay. Which means you can that, see that. Yeah. which means yeah. that one and five should not have been connected yeah. if it so if it had been. <laughs> Sir, uh, yeah, we can first go to two and then we can uh, go to one, right? It's yes. not that since we have listed yes, one, exactly. two, three in that order, we should not be, I mean, we should not be thinking that we are processing in the exactly, same order. Exactly. Multiple You're not going in the order. That is something you have to know this, right? No, but if we are, uh, so isn't it a rule? You are right at that point. When you go in an order, right? Then you yeah. are right. Yeah, the reason I, I assume we are going in that order is because one is listed to the left and then two to the right of it, right? And okay, that's okay. the reason why I assume that order. Yes, yes, yes. No problem. Okay. What about option four? Sir, option sir, option I three, can I add a point, please? Sir. Yes, yes, please go ahead. Uh, option three, you know, uh, is uh, I observed that it has got connection between, uh, you know, eight, nine, there is an edge, nine, ten, also there is an edge. Um, and 9, 11, there is, of course, there is an edge in the tree itself. But, you know, in the graph, if it is, you know, in BFS, if it can either be, it can either have an edge for 8 to 9 or 9 to 10 only. You cannot have both because once it is explored, once um, one of the edges is explored, the other one should not come into the picture. Is that valid or does it make uh, no sense? No, no. What you are trying to, whatever you are saying is fine. But... This is considering this as your original graph, right? And when you're trying to go back to your this thing, then you definitely ignore that, right? Oh, okay, fine. Right? You go fine. reverse. Right. All right. Got Thanks. Yeah. What about option four? The edge between five and nine is not there in the option four. Yes, sir. It is because of this is in this is incorrect. So <laughs> only option three is correct. So taken all those arguments, do not get confused uh, here. There was nothing mentioned like you have to go in an increasing order or a decreasing order or something like that, right? So that is the main thing that we have to, there are some points where we can get confused. And also sometimes what happens is we try to draw the graph from this. We don't have to do this. We have to think that we are trying to draw the BFS from this. That is something we have to think, okay? 
otherwise we tend to you know uh, make mistake so these are the two things that we can keep in our mind all right so now having known these let's get into bfs uh, dfs now and try to solve this again so oh, quick question why was the fourth yeah. one wrong because there was a connection from uh, five there is no connection between five and nine but in the bfs oh, edition okay right? okay okay yeah. got it what i have observed so far that elimination method would be most viable to solve these type of questions right yeah. rather than yeah. going through yeah okay so now this was our bfs street so i will just erase the other part okay and then you can see that what is really happening here so now this is my bfs street let's try to draw the dfs street okay and see how that is different from this bfs tree okay so again same thing we have to follow this alphabetical order right so now could and you sir, tell me that one more point was that uh, uh, all edges that were uh, that were other than the bfs tree will always form cycle right sir but it, it is not in case of dfs uh, come again come again uh, the all edges which are present in dfs bfs tree uh -huh. if there is an, any other edge from any level to any level uh -huh. uh, that edge will definitely form cycle okay yeah that is what uh, that is something you see you make this bfs tree so that there is no there is no cycle right so if you connect any other edge here that will create a cycle you just think of anything just connect this it'll form a cycle so that's what no so uh, it's basically this is a tree it's a minimally connected graph so if you add one more edge to it it's going to form a cycle right but you see this what what is interesting to know over here is both bfs and dfs removes the cycle from the graph okay but it actually does not check the, whether there is a cycle or not that is something interesting we have to know so both when you are doing this bfs and dfs you are removing this you know you are basically removing the cycles from the graph right and you are making a tree out of it Awesome, but but your dfs it will not be no in dfs in dfs non edge which are not present in dfs tree that edge may or may not be form cycle okay so well uh, i'll come to that in a while so you know you you have when there is a directed cycle you know it it is different thing oh right? so in undirected, is undirected in both cases in both cases yeah. cycle will be formed yes even if you add one single edge it will create a cycle in both in the bfs tree and dfs tree in both tree yes 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 so this is okay. note this this is undirected graph okay this is not a directed graph and i'm trying to do bfs and dfs for undirected graph and why i cross this because this is a directed graph this i'll discuss after this so i'll come to that part in a while so now you understand this now what i'm trying to do here is i'm trying to draw this dfs tree right again same condition everything now you have to help me out here to solve this so again my parent node is a okay so i'll just draw this again or maybe i'll not we'll use that counter thing what uh, professor has used so you see this is like pre counter and post counter okay so that is something uh, professor uses so we can just go with that counter uh way uh, as sir uses and try to solve this so how is that happening here is so you see this basically what you do is you form a stack over here now what do you do from a we are going in an alphabetical order right so just remember uh, we told you right like when you are doing a google search what happens you get a link and then you click on that link and then you get into the other link and then get into the other link and now when you want to go back to your first thing what do you do you cut down the other links right so what do you do is this is last in first out right right whichever is the last in that is something going out first isn't it yeah. right? sir correct sir i have a question here yes hello yeah is there any difference between last in first out and first in last out uh first in last out yeah there is a difference yes the, what is the difference i'm not asking first in first out first in last out and last in first out last in first out yeah that is dfs 
No, so there was a question no, uh, in the there in was one a of the test. Yeah. Yes, FIFA. I'm not asking about first in, first out. It is Q. That's okay. Last in, first out is a stack, and first in, last out will also be a stack, right? F I L O and L I F O. First in, last in, out. In last out and last in, first out. L I F O. Last in, first mm -hmm. out. First out. Ah, this is forming a. This is this is forming, a, forming stack. a stack. Even okay. the above is about... forming a stack, right? Okay. Can we? Uh, can you give me a reason? Because in what? the stack, whatever is inserted first, uh, we are uh, obviously going to take it at the last, right? Yes, yes, yes. Whatever yes, is, sir. Uh, sir, there is yes, an yes, example yes, of definitely. sir a pile of a book, right? Like a correct, pile correct, of a book, correct. which yeah, is right. right. It's right. It's right. Yeah, both. Both convey the same meaning, but in one yes, of yes, our both activity are questions. But no, no, but it gave us as incorrect. For yeah, it is, it is. It was a choose more than one option, like a checkbox. When we selected both, it is not allowing. It is uh, allowing only for last okay, in, fine. first out. Tell I which 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 activity it was. Uh, I have to take the number. Just fine, fine. Uh, uh, we will look into this. Okay, and we'll make this as an image. Yeah. We'll check that and we'll see that. So, philo and lipo are same, post... sir. Uh, this is the point of this discussion, right? I have posted this in the forum also, but most people got, understood it the way as FIFO and they got confused with Q and then the thread became so long. Maybe it didn't okay. get into your notice. Fine, fine. We'll just look into that part. Okay. So, no, it is about stack. So, they so are forming philo a stack. and lipo are same thing, sir. They are forming a stack. That is something you have to understand. Okay. Yeah, they are just forming a stack. There is nothing to do with the D, uh, DFS. When you're doing this DFS, then you'll have to go with, uh, you know, last in, first out. Or okay. first in, last out. Both are same same thing in different language. No, when you want to apply this DFS tree, when you want to form... How do you basically form a DFS tree is by uh, last in, first out. You take that methodology. Well, both of them are stack, but when you're applying a DFS, you follow this, uh, you know, last in, first out method. Okay. So, so but, oh, we are also applying a stack in the DFS, no? Uh -huh. So that is just a stack, right? And see, this is an algorithm, right? So which algorithm are you using? See, it's like both are stack. Okay. But where this DFS would be applicable, right? So it is like whichever is last in, first out, that is something for those kind of stacks, you actually use this DF, uh, depth first search. I mean, so you use this depth two, first search. Two, definis, uh, two algorithm for a stack. One is LIPO yeah. and one is PHILO. Yeah. Achal, yes. So what will be the difference between LIPO and PHILO? Okay. Like so what is the exam. difference? Is... Sorry? Like I can give an example. Sir, yes, please answer. go ahead. Except, sir, it will be last in, first out. Though, because I can explain this. See, when you're going there from the same K to F, you come to F, it is the last one we have come. After F, we don't have anything. Then you go back. So last one is F, then you're going back. So that is the first out. So this is basically last in, first out. In the conversely, when you say first in, last out, so first in was A to B. So how can from F, how can we go to B to A? So last in, first out will not be there. It will be whatever, whichever was the last one, that will be first outside. You got the difference? I mean, am I convincing? See, I can like... See, the main discourse, what we are having now is between last in, first out, and first in, last out. So in DFS, we are all uh, sure that it is last in, first out. What I am trying to tell is, this will be last in, first out, because once you come to the last uh, word is, we have to go back. So that was the last in, and it will be the first out. Conversely, when you say, uh, first in will be the last out, First in, we will not, when you are coming to the last word, is, there is the question of first in there. First in was the, the first uh, initial load, which in this case will be. Right. Is making any sense? Okay. 
So, may I ask uh, something related to this? Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Mm -hmm. Sir, uh, did I get it wrong? Uh, Achal, Achal had to say something. Yeah, Achal. Sir, I am not able to understand the difference between last in first and first in last out. Sir, like I can give an example. Real yes, life, yes, please go ahead. Yeah, like please if you ahead. take a pile of chairs, like three, four chairs kept on like each other, then what to take first out is and the uh, one which kept in the last one at the end. And hence, this if will never be executed. And uh, all of you can mute and just, uh, yeah, please go ahead, Amir. Yeah, so like if you put three, oh, four sorry, chairs Harsha. on yeah. top of each other, then the last one you put is the first one which you will take out. Oh, yeah, that is last in first out. First out, right? yeah. And if I, if Philo will be the same, right? The la first chair which you put will be the, on the lowest one. That will be the last one which you will take out. Um, sir? Uh, so, no. Yeah. So, but in the chair case, the first one that has been put, that will be the last one out too. Correct, correct. That is not the first one out, yeah. So, uh, we can think of it this way that first and last out doesn't really say anything about the other element it just says whatever went first comes out last maybe that's why we don't use it and use the last in first out algorithm. yeah so yeah. first of all and yeah please go ahead so please sir you explain there is i am listening only first and last <laughs> nothing uh, understanding sir. yes sir sir comparing okay. to the bfs algorithm which i got it sir the uh, depth first algorithm uh, do we have to change only one thing that we change the queue to a stack uh, to explore to explore elephant uh, we change it from uh, a queue to last in first out is that the only difference between the two algorithms uh, from BFS to DFS uh, yes sir okay so over here what you do is like as I, as I was telling you in BFS you go level by level and over here what are you doing is you suspend all, like when you're exploring any vertices, right? You suspend all other vertices, right? And whichever is the last vertices, you exit from there. So it's like last in, first out, like that kind of thing. Okay, sir. For an example, I'll tell you with an example, if I am uh, if I go with this uh, DFS tree uh, drawing example. So okay. you see, stack is nothing but, it's just a pile of disks. Yeah. Now just imagine that, you know, uh, or, or just books kept one after the other. Like, let's say this is book one, this is book two, this is book three, and this is book four. What do you call this as? Stacks, right? It's just an English word, right? Right? So yes. when you take out something from here, now see, this is like first in, right? This is like first in, like, how do you keep a book, right? So you first keep the lower one, then you keep the upper one, and then you keep the next one, and then you keep the... Next one. So this is your first in, second, this is third, and this is fourth, right? Now, if you want to take out books, how do you take out? You take out from here, right? So whichever is the last, that is the one which is going out first, right? And then this will be the next which is coming out, then this, and then this. You understand? So last one... Sir, sir, just a last. point I want to add here to his question. He was asking exactly, are this, uh, is this the only difference how we are processing or is there anything else difference between uh, BFS and DFS? There is one more difference I observed is in BFS, when we take a node A in our example, we are inserting all the three children, which maybe if I can say B, C, okay. D together into the, uh, into the list, whatever we are maintaining. And then we are processing it one by one. Okay. As of now, I'm leaving whether we are taking it from the starting or uh, ending first in last out, whatever it is. But we are adding all the three uh, connected the neighbors together into the list. But as in the case of DFS, we are not doing that. We are only adding one neighbor. We are adding only B first. And then it's neighbors. And then it's neighbors. We are not adding B, C, D all together, all the neighbors together into the list while we are processing That's for what? a DFS. Correct. So what are we doing here in BFS is like, you definitely go one, one step deeper. But what do you do? You must make sure that you are cleared with all these three. Like whenever you're exploring. Yeah, yeah. And so you're going one label ahead. The That's first thing. Yeah, only the uh, FIFO or the LIFO. This is not just the only difference. We have this difference also. 
you can take it in this way also if you want yes you can say that as you are exploring it but you are just going one step deeper but in dfs what is happening yes you are going in depth search right it's not that you are limiting to one level itself you are going to multiple levels okay. you know yes yes but the formation of that list is also differing that's what i am saying correct correct that is right yes so you can take it both the things from here okay so now just imagine now uh, that is what like the book example which i was telling you so whichever when you are keeping book one after the other right so the last one is the one which is coming out first well that is something your last in first out now imagine like you are taking out this book first now this is your first book this is still a stack right this is your first book this is your last book right so now what you are taking out let's say this is not a right example but what really it means is like you are taking out this book from the bottom first so it's like first in first, first out. out but that was first in last out no okay if, if for fifo maybe we should consider a different example like standing oh, in yeah, queue exactly, or ticket one. or something not this example so oh, yeah exactly that does not make sense here so uh uh which example you are telling just tell me once yeah like some example Stand, like standing bank, in a line for bank yeah, for ATM. something gets yeah so yeah. uh, for an example okay. bank atm right lifo no sir filo and lifo both are stack but what was the difference first no, both first. are not stack filo and lifo so you please complete okay yes sir so so you see this uh, as if now you can take consider this thing that you know the first in and sorry the last in first out is a stack problem right and the other thing what you told is uh, what was that last in first out right sorry the first in last out philo Filo but sir, I never heard this first in FIFA only. I heard Filo is never heard, sir. So, but this also forms a stack. That is what uh, uh, people are making. Yeah, statement. Yeah. That is that is, but that is right. Actually, it forms a stack. You know, hmm. maybe even I look into this and give you a better example for that. Uh, this one example, what uh, you know, this ATM queue example is the one right example. But maybe I can just give you another example, and maybe in discourse or a forum. okay so as if now let's just go with this one that is last in first out okay that this kind of problem and this is forming an stack so why do we call this when we are trying to do this i'll tell you like how it is this happening so this is like first like what are you trying to do over here is like let, let's just take an example uh, that you start with a you know node a and you go in an alphabetical order okay and then you are trying to explore this right so from a you are going to in alphabetical order so it's like you know you search something on on google let's say and you found out a and from a you get another link say b right let's keep a counter over here at at a the counter was zero right and when you are exploring b right so the counter is one okay now what i can go where C D from B I D. from B where all I can go now that is I am left D with, right? D okay with what counter counter number two from D e. where all I can go E or F E or G E I'll be going to E because I have to follow the alphabetical e. order E yes. and then with what counter three from E where all I can go G with no C C D in alphabetical C. order right. So C and with what counter four, okay. From C where all I can go, I can go but to A. E. That's it. Okay. So now what G I exit E. Now what happens? Now I exit C. So now exit C with what counter? Five. Five. Now once I'm done with five, now I come back where to E. Now from E I see where all I can explore. From E I could have gone to D, but D is already done. I can go to G, right? and i'll be to the i'll be doing the depth for search from e so from e where all i can go g the only place is g right okay with with what okay so now i go to f but i did not exit e you notice this now what counter it will be here 
six. Six. Right? Six. Now from G, where all I can go? F. 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 I can also go to D, but D is already, uh, you know, visited. So I can go to F. Okay. So maybe I can just, I can go to F over here. With what counter? Seven. Seven, not Seven. eight. Seven, okay. And over here, now from here, what happens? From from F, where all I can go? I can go to D and G, but these are already visited. So I, I exit F. With what exit. counter? Counter number eight. Now what? You go with G. Now from G, you can go to only these three places, which is already visited. So you exit G as well. So with what counter? Nine. From now you go with E. So now from E, where all you can go? No, no. no. From three places, which is already visited. Now you can exit this. With what counter? Counter number 10. Likewise from D, where all you can go? Three places, right? Which is already visited. Then I exit this. Then I go where? To B. Again, same thing happens. I exit with counter 12. And now from A, where all I can go? I can go to C, That's but again, C is visited. So with what counter? 13. So 13. you see this. Okay. So now this is what you get overall, right? Okay. So now how do you, how do you, so now how do you check this? How do you cross check this? Now, whatever you get over here. Now uh, it's like how, how many vertices are there? There must be seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So number of vertices, number of vertices, that is twice the number of vertices should be equal to the total number of counter plus one. So it's like 13 plus one, right? So this, and this should match basically. Okay. You understand? Yes. Okay. So now can you tell me how many, so, can you tell uh, me how many branches are there? Six and minus one. Sir, I have a, I have a doubt. I think I, I just missed something that um, okay. can you, can you please yeah, tell me, you know, how did we make the jump from five to six? We came uh, up to five from, from E to C. I can mm -hmm. understand that. So after C, there is nothing else to explore. So we come back and then we go to G. Mm -hmm. So that going back to E is not counted as six, is it? Until it is not finished. No, no, no. Until, until it is not finished. Yeah. Its neighborhood is not finished, not visited something. Sir, sir. Yeah. Okay. So it cannot become six. So, okay. Yeah. We count okay. when you visit or when we permanently exist. When, exit. We, when we exhaust. Yeah. yeah. You have to exhaust. Leave. Yes. Okay. Uh, you enter fine. the room, uh, press the button. You ex uh, exit, the. Uh, you leave the room, press the button. Without pressing button, you cannot enter and you cannot leave. And without leaving or entering, you cannot press enter. Uh, both are... Fine. Sir, Everybody sir, has more? our own way of understanding, but you understood, right? Like yeah, I, are... it's I understood. Sir, I have one more doubt in this. So just mm -hmm. looking at this BFS and DFS, we have the same number of edges. Like you know, I think that is one of the things. You know, the tree is minimally connected. You said when we Correct. said you know it uses the minimum number of edges. Is it always the case that DFS and BFS will have the same number of edges, Correct. or Correct. can it? Change? Yes, yes, yes. That yeah. is definitely going to be right. It's going to have the same number. Okay. Sir, can you explain it? Number of is, edges uh, in DFS and BFS will be same. Yeah, the number of three edges will be same. Sir, is this the case for directed graphs also? Uh, uh, okay, you can actually say this, but again, you cannot, uh, you know, uh, because, you know, the edges are different because uh, the number of three edges you meant? Yes, number of tree edges in BFS and DFS for directed graphs. Will, okay. will that be same? Uh, the number of... Uh, actually, it should be same, but I'm not sure of this. It should be same. This is what I I see. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. So we'll, we'll check with that. We can just figure it out when we are doing one example, okay? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, you understood, right, this much part? All we have to notice here is, okay, can you tell me how many branches are there in this BFS tree? In this BFS tree. Let's count what the number of branches. What do you mean by branches, sir? Okay. So branches yes. means basically this extension. This is one branch. This is another branch. From a node. 
from a node where we started from, from the root node from the root node this is another branch this is branch number 3 and this is branch four. number 4 right so we have four branches there over we here how many branches, branches do we have there are how many branches two. over here two branches two. okay so one thing that we have to note from here is in dfs basically in dfs you know you can have so edges in the original graph now i'll just as we were discussing before like okay where now if this is my dfs tree right and now you are trying to draw the uh, you know uh, basically your original graphs now then edges in the original graph cannot be between two branches that is something we have to make a note of it so we can just write it down here formally saying that you know and we can just verify also edges in original graph cannot be between two branches can anybody tell me this reason why can anybody tell me this reason sir because uh, i think uh, we, we have, have uh, we have explored right? uh, before switching sir, to branch we have already correct. explored all so there hmm. should not sir, be any connection we, Yeah. In DFS, you are saying, or in BFS, you in D you in DFS, 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 DFS. Okay, okay. So Edges in the original graph cannot be between two branches. Can can anybody tell me why? Sir, I I think uh, because uh, in every branch we already explore all its neighbor uh, neighbors. Correct. So and another branch could not have some neighbor of from Correct. another branch. correct so for an example if there was an edge connecting c g right then from c we would have directly gone to g right isn't it yes sir yes sir right so because of that particular reason this cannot happen but you can have an edge between any level over here you can have an edge this way unlike bfs where we were restricting but sir has you can have Sorry, but sir, it it has to be in, inside the same branch, right? Inside From the same a branch. To yes, yes, yes. Cannot be A to G, right? Correct, correct. You cannot interchange the branch. That is like you yeah. have to definitely obey this. No, right. we can have say A to G, but we can't. We can't have C to F because there are two branches, right? A to C and A to F. A to G is correct. Yeah, A to G you can have. A to because C and A to F. Because this is one branch. branch. Because this is one branch, right? You can have between any level. You can have an edge. right because this is forming one edge uh, this is forming an one branch and this is forming you cannot have branches between this and this hmm. you cannot have an edges between c and f and you cannot have edges between these and this why because hmm. these are two different uh, branches so by seeing dfs we could say a b and d could have maximum number of edges but uh, other branch other other vertex could not have right sorry come again a b A, B, and D are only vertex which could have maximum number of uh, edges or maximum degree. A, B, and D. How can you talk about maximum number of degrees? Because A to we could go to G and A to we could go to C, but from G like that you are telling. Not go to C. From like that A, you are telling. Fine, fine. Yes, sir. From A, I I could go to B, D, E, C, G, F, anywhere. But from G, from F, from C, I cannot go to. Mm -hmm. You can think it in that way as well. Mm. Sir, and okay. I see this the statement what we have just mentioned applies only to undirected graphs because for directed we have the concept of we'll cross edge, right? We'll come to that. We'll come to that. Okay. So as if now it is clear, all of us. Mm. All of yes, us, all of us are clear. So you see this. We were actually using LIFO when we were doing this, right? You see this. First, what we were doing, we went to A. Then we were suspending all other vertices, right? So from A we went to B, right? From B we went to D, right? Look at this graph. A, B, D, and alphabetically we went to where? From D we went to E, mm. right? And then, then we went to C. Then G and F. 
and from C, I'm, I, I have nothing more to visit, right? So what now I'm exiting C, right? So look at this. Now what, this was my last thing. Now I'm exiting from here, right? So from C, I exit, isn't it? So this, look at this counter. The counter was zero, one, two, three, four, mm -hmm. right? And with what counter I'm exiting this? Right. So this was my last, this was my last in. I note that this is my first out, right? So with what counter? With counter number five, I exit this, right? And then from E, I'm starting this, right? So this goes out. So this is how, you know, you build a stack and then you uh, follow this list. Okay. So the concept so now, that, so the concept that you just told now edges in the original graph cannot between two branches. So it's like, like we can't have any cycle, something like cycle on, you know? Yes, yes. This is what like same, we can't have cycles in minimal tree or something. Same Correct. principle. Hmm. Same principle you can say, but you can still have, uh, you know, uh, if this, if this is the same branch, you can still have this and it forms a cycle. Right? Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Right. So you cannot say that in general, but what you can say is like, even if you connect a single branch. extra edge that will create a cycle. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now having known that you, we understood something from here. Now I can just erase this part and come to this you know, some naming when we are, so you notice this, this is all about undirected graphs. Now what, what happens with undirected graph? That is something we'll, uh, we'll see what is that. Okay. So now just let's, let's uh, understand sir, this. Uh, in this, in this, this was undirected graph. So here there is no concept of a forward edge, backward edge. Correct, 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 correct. Here only cycle will be. Correct. Every edge will form cycle. Non-tree edges. Yeah. Any non-tree edges will form a cycle. Okay, now come to this part. Now over here we are performing. Now we'll just perform. Okay, so first of all, before performing anything, let me just give you an idea. Okay, what is this forward edge, backward edge? And you know, let's do that naming thing so that you know when I'm just so when I'm discussing this, then I can actually explain you better. So for an example, let's say A, B, C, D. Okay, let me give it as an F. Okay, so all of these are, let's say these are directed graphs. Okay, so these are directed like this. So you see this, is this forming a tree? Is this a directed acyclic graph? Is there any cycle here? No, no, it is. Uh, it is. It is a. It it. Uh, it is a direct. It is yes, a directed. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So you see this. This is basically. Let's say. Uh, you know. Uh, forget about BFS. BFS. As if now there is no cycle over here, and all these and this is forming a tree, right? Yes. And it is directed. A cyclic. There is no cycle, right? So directed. A cyclic. Tree, you say, or you say it as a graph. It's better to say directed. A cyclic graph is nothing but it's forming a tree, right? So this is basically this is what we call it as DAG, mm. right? Directed A cyclic graph. Now, before going further, these edges, this A B, okay, B C, right? All these edges, these are called as tree edges. What are they called as? Tree edges. These edges are called as tree edges. Okay, now, now I'll just draw the another, I'll use the red color. This is called as forward edge. Okay, now forward edge can, you can have it from anywhere to anywhere. So you can have it like this. Top to bottom. You can have it. A to B also. cannot be forward edge. A to B is not a forward edge, it's a tree edge. Okay. Forward edges, non-tree edges. Ha, these are also, so basically tree edges are these things, whatever I have drawn and non-tree edges are all these. So maybe I can just give the heading as non-tree edges so that, uh, you know, like we will have an idea. So non-tree edges are of three types, which are those forward edge, backward, cross. Yeah. Forward, backward. Backward edge cross. and cross edge. 
so let's understand which are those okay so now next is cross edge okay so which are forward edges so the one which is marked in red is forward edge okay now what next now what do you mean by backward is now if i have an edge connecting like this suppose bottom to top right so this is called as a backward edge right you can also have a backward edge from here to let's say here okay so it's a backward edge what about cross edge cross edges are between two branches mm. okay so if i have an edge something like this uh from c to d right ha from c to d either this way or this way whichever way but from c, c to d is forming a this this is called as a cross edge so it's be, it's between two different branches right or you can have an edge if if you have an edge something like this mm. right so this is called as cross edge okay maybe i'll use different color here so this is just the naming part before me uh, taking you further here so this is just a naming part that we have done here so maybe i can just say that this is a cross edge this is also a cross edge okay so maybe i can just not keep this but keep it this way fine so i hope you understood what is difference between so this three edges is something which is forming a dag basically a directed acyclic graph so these are something a tree edges and what are those non tree edges these extra edges which is something we have omitted off so these are of three types one is forward edge another is backward edge and there is a cross edge right the backward edge will be a cy cyclic right correct mm. so now mm -hmm. one thing that we have to notice is look at this if this is my dag right look at this green color thing now whenever we have a backward edge it creates a cycle see now look look at this part a b d it creates a cycle right i can go back to a right now likewise b c e i can again go back to b now it creates a cycle right yes. so whenever we have a backward edge in directed graphs basically this is for because all these are direction directions are shown so only the backward edges forms a cycle clear mm -hmm. okay now let's do this bfs and dfs for these kind of things when we have uh, you know when we have a directed graph then how do we find the bfs and then how do we find the dfs right so let's quickly do uh, and you know go to our main slide where we were discussing the things you know uh, okay yeah, fine so sir, backward edge means is smaller to bigger uh, numbering sir uh Uh, sir, bigger numbering to, to smaller numbering. A smaller numbering to bigger numbering is backward edge, no? What do you mean by smaller numbering and the uh, counter number? Yes, sir, yes, sir. So from a DFS numbering we have used, no? Uh, that is that is used to determine back edge, hmm. which edge is back. So from so, bigger number to a smaller number, you go right. That is, I think, forward. No, bigger to smaller. That is forward. That is yes. backward. No, bigger. One way we can understand. Bigger interval to small, smaller interval. It goes. So, uh, in the lectures, professors have proposed this concept of uh, identifying the interval, that pre-numbering and post-numbering on every edge, on every vertex. We okay. identify the intervals, and we are connecting a forward or backward edge. for those two vertices we identify that interval suppose we are connecting from a to c or c to a whether we are connecting a non tree edge then we identify the intervals for both a and c vertices so depending on the interval sizes uh, we can identify whether it is a forward edge or backward edge that was the mm -hmm. concept oh yeah yeah suppose a, if a is the root node and it has an interval of 0 and 15 interval in the sense 0 is the pre numbering and 15 is the post numbering of a so it has interval 0 to 15 i can say and suppose there is a vertex down the line say c it has an interval of 3 and 6 i mean in the, in between there is a b and some other or some okay see if it is if it has interval 2 and 9 or something like that 3 and 6 whatever Yeah, two and nine. So the here the interval is two nine. 
the earlier case, it is 0 to 50. If we connect from A to C, that means we are connecting from 0 15 interval to 2 9 interval. That means a bigger interval to a smaller interval. It will be a forward edge. Okay. Obviously, here A's number is 0 and C number is 2 in the sense the graph is moving in the direction of C from A, right? So if we connect from 0 to 15 and 2 to 9 also, the, our new edge is also moving in the same direction as that of the graph. Right. So that right. would be a forward edge. Yeah. If we simply reverse the concept of 2 to 9 to 0 to 15, it will be a backward edge. Yeah, yeah, correct. You can actually, sir has also explained it very well. You can just watch that. Okay. Yes. yes. And whatever you told is perfectly right. Yeah, thank you. Okay, so now let's quickly get into our main discussion here and I have to discuss this DAG and topological sequence and then we can, you know, uh, wind our session. But now let's quickly understand like how do we perform DFS for this, okay? So condition is DFS, uh, suppose DFS uh, of this graph is performed from node A such that when we visit a vertex, we explore the unvisited neighbors in alphabetical order, okay? So this is something they are saying. So we are performing DFS from where? From, from node A. So from A, where all I can go, I can go to B and I can go to C, but I have to go in alphabetical order, right? So I'll go to B, right? B. And since we are doing DFS, then I'll be, you know, I'll suspend B and I'll explore the next vertices, right? In alphabetical C. order, which is C or D. So it is basically C. 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 And from C, where all I can go? Basically, I can only go to F, F right? So this is my next step. So let, let, let us keep, keep the counter over here so that, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3. And from F, where all I can go? D. 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 I can go to D. D. Right? Okay. D. Now from D, can I go anywhere? I actually cannot go anywhere. So what I exit this with which counter? Counter number 5. And once I'm done with D, then I go back to F. From F, I can go anywhere? No. F is also that. Six. Yeah. So Four, then five with is six, six. Yeah. And from C, can I go anywhere? C is also done. C no. is also done. So we go with the we exit with the counter number seven. From B, again we are exiting yes, this D. with eight. Uh yes. D no, sir, D is again. done, sir. All D five is done, all right? five vertices are okay. already there. Correct. But uh, have we gone in an alphabetical order? I'll just cross check again. So A, we are going in an alphabetical order. So A to B. From B, I can go to C. Yes. From C, I'm, I'm forced to go to F, and from F, I'm forced to go to D. Yeah, so we are doing right. So now we are going to 8. With counter 8, we exit A, uh, B. And then what? With counter we 9. A. We have, sir, we have D left. Okay, it's, it's covered. He's already D covered. Okay. Yeah? Yes. So now, this, now just to verify this, how many edges do we have? How many vertices we have? 5. five so 5 vertices, times 2 is nothing but 10. So 9 plus 1 is basically... So the last counter is counter number is nine. So you just have to add one in order to get uh, uh, twice the number of vertices, right? So that's verifies that yeah, somewhat like our DFS trees, right? So now let's understand which among which all edges that we have left out. So now how many edges? How many tree edges do we have? Five and minus one. One, two, oh. three, four. Oh. So four. we have four tree edges. Fine. So now hmm. we can just see other non-tree edges now okay so now let's uh, since we have covered only four but how many do we have here one two three four six. five six so six is uncovered uh, i mean two is uncovered right two edges is something we have not shown right so let's see which are those now you see that there is an edge connecting ac right right so it goes like this yes. a to c right right and yes. as uh, she was telling like you see that interval thing you can just go with the interval as well but you can see that directly a to c yes. is directly connected right is this a forward edge back okay yes. we'll come to that part in a while so now ac is done now which all edges that we have left bd bd bd, BD is uncovered right so bd now bd is again a forward edge forward, forward edge but this thing we have to sir cross check from the options only now which is required options Option is asking CF, FD. Then we have to check the interval. If the interval correct, is correct. falling. That is fine. Interval. But we can at least do this because this is not very difficult to do. So we can at least just cover it up so that, you know, we have uh, everything on paper and this graph is not actually big so that it's okay. We can actually, uh, you know, do this. 
Uh, definitely right when you are in your examination and you have four options so why you know you why waste time here and there but that is out of practice but this mm -hmm. as we are learning here so we can just do this now mm -hmm. cf very c and f is cf for forward edge no it's a tree edge so it's a tree edge yeah. so how many forward edges do we have two two forward edges two. and this forward edge is nothing but tree uh, non tree edges right this is one type of non tree edge right okay now fd is a backward edge is this right no fd is a backward edge no, no. it's a tree edge only for it's a tree side. edge ac is a forward edge is this right it is a forward yes. edge yes yes it is ac is a forward edge yes bd is a backward edge no no no, no sir bd is a forward edge no it is forward edge right so we are at least fine with these many things Okay, so now I'll take you to periodic slides. We'll just get it done with those uh, some of the sections, and then we can come back directly to the DAG. Okay. How and many questions is, are left, sir? Uh, now I'll not be giving you much time to solve this because I'll be skipping these slides where I'm. It's it's the same thing written what I have explained, right? So I'll just directly take you to the question. What is DFS tree? All that thing, you know. I'll share you these slides. You can go through directly. Come to the question and give me the answers. Okay, sir, so we'll how quickly many get. Are there? there are some eight questions, four, six questions, or seven questions, something like this. But we'll not cover all those questions here because I think uh, you see the explanation part is already done, and uh, we can just cover the main question. What is needed uh, from and today's... sir, it will be I think provided in our dashboard, right? Right, right. We'll provide you. Okay. Okay, so now let's uh, uh, yes, do, sir, do this yes, sir. question. At 8 p.m. also we have one class of statistics. Right, right. So I'll make sure that Probably within five time. minutes, this all these questions are being done and with explanation. So don't worry about it. And we can just discuss that topological sequence. That's not a very difficult thing. I'll, I'll discuss that with you. Okay, so uh, look at this question number two. Suppose we obtain the following BFS tree rooted at node A for an undirected graph with vertices so and so. Which of the following cannot be an possible edge in the original graph? E and I. You can. <laughs> so fine, you can just give me your response soon. Are they given, sir? It's given, sir. Yes, sir. Interbranch uh, in undirected interbranch cannot be possible. Uh, it's a BFS tree, so make a note of this. Oh, it's sorry. a BFS, so the level yeah. we need to calculate. Okay, okay. Then, then also this is another level, E2I. Level, yeah. E. Yeah. Okay. So all of you? It's uh, the right answer. Okay. Yeah. So you still need some time to solve this? Done, sir. Done, sir. Done. Sir, done. We can see sir, the popular done. responses. C. C. Option C, C and B. Okay. Let's see. Let's understand this. Which of the following cannot be an possible edge in the original graph? Let's say BK. So where is B? B is here and K is here. This is one level difference, which is possible, right? So this is this is fine. M N. So where is M and N? M and N is again possible. It's one level, hmm. right? Right. E I. E Not and possible. I. This is two level, two level difference, right? So this is. If this is level zero, so this is one and this is two. So this is two level difference, which is, this is not possible. EI is not possible. What about EH? EH possible. is possible because this is one level difference, right? Clear? So it's the same thing explained here. You can read this. Those who still did not understood what we are discussing, you can just read that. Uh, vertex coloring problem, I think all of you know this. I'll skip this part here. Uh, I think this is extensively done in the previous uh, live session, right? Sir, can we have a look just one minute? You want to look at this? Actually, I, today I only joined. Okay. So you see that you can look into this slide. I'll give you time. No worries. But before going there further, I just want to discuss the concept which is not discussed by us before. Right. So okay. I'll do that part sure. and I'll provide you this slides. No worries. And uh, this thing, this concept is also discussed in the previous lives. And you can just see that vertex coloring problem and you can understand it. Okay. Uh, from sure, we start with the tag. Okay. The so previous what do you session need? means uh, uh, yesterday, session. yesterday session. Yesterday session. You can see that session. Only one is, session, no? Yeah, one session wherein he has uh, covered almost everything. 
the only thing which was left is this bfs dfs and dag okay so uh, we can DAG, we have covered everything only one yesterday class maybe uh, someone not covered ha you can just watch that thing that will help you okay so now come to this part now what is a dag so i explained you a while ago that what is a dag so a directed acyclic graph does not have a cycle like this is the full form of dag so d directed acyclic graph right so you cannot definitely you should not have a cycle so well this is one fact by the name itself right now one more fact is a dag has a vertex with in degree 0 and every dag has a vertex with out degree 0 okay and another thing that we have to understand is topological shorting and long longest path can be solved on dag and what today we'll be discussing is this topological shorting longest path we can discuss in the next uh, uh, basically this is not a part of uh, week 10 this is a part of week 11 where we'll discuss this okay so But topological covered, shorting sir. uh sorry lain lectures sir has covered longest path and sorting something correct but that is actually this this question will be asked in week 11 okay oh. because this is two application he would have mentioned okay mm. okay mm-hmm. so now mm-hmm. these are the things now how do you do this topological shorting i'll explain you this process when i'm i'll i'll show you the slide and then not slide but i'll show you on the one note and then it will be fine to all of you so that i can just explain you here what do you really mean by this topological uh, sequence and then we can go back to that question directly and then we can discuss that okay so now let's go to this now first before going to uh, you know the main question i just want to first know like how many of you can understand this okay so now question to all of you is which among the following is that okay so this is a question now i'll draw a graph and you have to tell me if these are dag or so okay so this is somehow connected like this okay so this is let's say option 1 option 1 is dag <laughs> no, not a cyclic we'll see so, that Hmm. Let's click. This is option two. I think I'll do it. It's not a dag. I mean, it it's not a dag. Yeah, option two. Option three. So, which among them is a DAG? Is Only option one. one a DAG? One, one. Option one is a DAG. Okay. So let's see why. So first of all, a directed acyclic graph, right? So directed acyclic. All I have to make sure is there is no cycle, right? And and other thing that I have to make sure is it's a directed graph, right? So you can see this is a directed graph for sure. so and now all i have to make sure is there is no cycle in this okay so now how many which all places i can look for cycle so look at this is this forming a cycle a no. b there is no, no connecting with c so this is not forming a cycle well fine a b c it's basically not forming a cycle and now we can look at this overall mm-hmm. a b c d but you are, there is no way going back to a right so essentially mm-hmm. this is not forming That's a cycle it. right so this is dag So is this a dag? Yes. What yes. about this? Yes. Now let's look into this smaller no. first smaller look. So A B C. Well, and there is no way for going to A, right? So this is this is not forming a cycle. Well, that's fine. But what about this B C D? Oh, this is forming well, a cycle. Right? cycle sir. Yes, sir. Ha. Huh. So this is not a dag, right? Because even if you have any subset of it which is forming a cycle, still this is. uh non cyclic graph right uh, it's basically a cyclic right so mm-hmm. this is yeah so this is not a dag what about this is this a dag yes sir third is dag bidirectional it's a dag i hope no it's it's a dag. It doesn't have any vertex with the degree zero no sir it is not it a dag uh, let's see sir. same what a single edge cannot be counted degree twice degree. a single edge uh, cannot be counted twice 
so before going further could you tell me what is cycle cycle actually three but it's cycle right they are they are to reach the same correct so cycle of a graph means you start from a vertex and if you can trace back to the same vertex then it forms a cycle right mm. right yes. you start from a vertex and if you can right you start from a vertex and if you can trace universe. back to the same vertex again then it forms a cycle right so now look at this the same thing like this is what this can i write it in the other way saying that this is a and this is b this both are equivalently same right yes yes right? yes is this a cycle now no sir at least three words are required to complete a cycle sir told no, i told you i just told you the definition of cycle how as per i in sir then it is a cycle sir yeah it is a cycle it is a cycle also sir, sir we have just seen every diag should have at least one vertex with in degree one vertex with in degree 0 here both mm -hmm. the vertices have well, in degree 1 those are facts those are facts we'll come to the facts in a while but look at this part right right so you understood no this is forming a cycle right so this is not a diag okay so now with facts what we we just learnt in a while uh, you know a diag must have at least one vertices with in degree 0 and at least one vertices without degree 0 right right these are certain facts that we learnt right hmm. and also one more fact is from a diag if you remove any vertices the resultant a uh, graph what you get is again a dag right mm. right yes, so now right. let's understand this so now if that is the case now having known okay what is dag then let's get into this part since there are two applications for dag so which are those two applications one is topological sequencing or topological sorting and another is what finding the longest path so today we'll mm. be discussing just this topological sequencing okay So option three was DAG, sir. No DAG. It was it not. not DAG. No, it was not a DAG. Okay. Okay. So now, what do you mean by topological sequence? So maybe I'll first draw a graph. A, B. Let's say this is C, and this is D, and I'm connecting all of these. Okay. So let me say that. Oh, sorry. Uh... I have a doubt regarding the option three that you drew in the previous one. Sir. Okay. Yeah. Because there was only one bidirectional edge, and in one of the and in the session that you know we are told that uh, a single edge cannot be counted twice. But um, when you drew it, you know you actually drew one, um, two draw drew it as two different edges. Is it allowed? You know between two between two vertices or two edges like that? You know this is the same same two vertices or two edges allowed? Actually, he wants to say uh, for cycle graph there must be three vertex, right? Yeah, this is what I am thinking, sir. Actually, if we have bidirectional edges are there, so we will be starting from one end to other end only. We will be like the counting part, not the counting part. So we will be going in one direction, but we will not be going to other direction. We will be counting something like as Ma'am said, like. uh the vertices in the in, in incoming degree of the vertices should be zero and outgoing vertices degree should be something zero also sir in discrete mathematics rosen book cn we start from c3 only you mean to say uh, when that was a diagram when i'm thinking okay okay fine so you see this even i studied this somewhere and i came to an understanding that that you know as per the definition of cycle that if you start from any vertex and if you can trace back to the same vertex it forms a cycle right so if if you have some condition like this right so sorry so maybe we can have a different opinion on this right uh, as you guys are telling and you are giving some references maybe you can just quote that reference somewhere we can just discuss on that maybe wherever whichever forum we can discuss that but as per my understanding books, Okay, fine. So I can just look into that part. So as per my understanding, when both these directions are given, you know, when this is a bi-directional, it's form a cycle. Okay. So this is as per my understanding. Well, this seems to be a bit debatable. Uh, we can look into this part later on. Okay. Okay, sir. So Thanks. yeah. Fine. So now. Sir, at last I can show the PDF from my uh, tab, sir. 
I have PDF of that too. Okay, in which it's saying at least three vertices are required. To form a, even sir told also in lecture at least three vertices are required to form a cycle. Yes, sir. All right. This is what I was claiming, but uh, at some moment I thought also thought maybe it was too also. Fine. Uh, what we can do is like you can just put it in the forum. Maybe we can have a healthy discussion on this, saying that you know what should be the final takeaway for our particular course, right? So we can just discuss that. Okay, just put it in the forum, no? Whichever forum you guys are using, like discourse or you know, uh, discussion forum. Sure. Fine. Yeah, we can uh, do that. But as yeah. for my understanding, that was one thing. But let's see, like, uh, mm -hmm. if, you know, like we can discuss more on that. All right. Let's come to the main topic now. And, uh, we, you know, we can just get it done with this today. So now, uh, what do you really mean by topological sequencing? First of all, is this a DAG? Yes, sir. All of us? Is this yeah. a DAG? Yes. Yes. Because there is no cycle and this is directed graph, right? So this is a DAG. So well, if if this is a DAG, then you go with the topological sequence. So what do you really mean by topological sequences? Uh, you know, uh, so it's basically like, okay, I'll give you an application problem, which is there with me. We'll discuss that. But how it is done is something I'll tell you. First, you have to mention all those vertices with in degree. Okay. So, uh, what is the in degree of A? Zero. What is in degree of B? One. C? Two. Two. D? Two. Two. Okay. And a topological sequence will have at least one vertices with in degree zero, right? Mm -hmm. And at least one vertices without degree zero. Which is that vertices without degree zero? D. 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 So all these things is fulfilled, right? So now how do, what do you mean by topological sequence so it's just that you know it's like you know prioritizing certain tasks right so whichever vertices is with in degree zero right that becomes the first entry in your topological sequence so this comes as a in your topological sequence so when basically it means to say that you will have to perf you will have to first perform task a before going to any other task right so task a is that something comes in our topological sequence. Now, what do you do next is you just remove this A. So when you remove this A, what do you get? We'll get B zero degree, C one, huh. D one. Huh. C one, so D one. And D. Now we will update this in degree, uh, you know, uh, the in degrees of these vertices. So now what is in degree of B? Zero. 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 C one, one. one and one. D. Now, is this still a DAG? Yes. yes. Why? Because you see yes. the out degree of D is what? Zero. Zero. Six. And I have one, I have uh, one vertices that is B with in degree what? Zero. So this is again fulfilled. This is still a DAG, right? So whatever we were claiming, a DAG, when you remove for a DAG, when you remove a vertices, the resultant graph, what you get is again a DAG, right? So now, which is now again, we'll follow the same uh, saying that whichever vertices is with in degree zero, that is something we can remove, right? And that basically remove and put it in our topological sequence. So now next task that I have, that we have to perform is task number B, right? Now, if this is the case, then what is the next task that you will be performing? C, C is in degree C, will be zero and, and this in degree. Is one. Uh -huh. And this is, uh, sorry, this is oh, zero C. and this is one. So naturally CD wow. is the next thing, right? So this sequence, what you yes. get is topological sequence, right? Right. So this is what we get it. Okay. So now let's quickly get into one application based question on this and try to understand. Uh, this. Sir, uh, so one doubt is here. Mm -hmm. But if we remove the H from the AD, will it consider to be a DAG or not? Okay. Uh, AD, whatever the D is left over, right? You mean to say a single vertices is a DAG or not? Uh, no, sir. If we remove, uh, can you please uh, move back the slider? Okay, just a sir, is this the last topic that we are covering today? Yes, yes, yes. It's the last. Yes, tell if me. we remove the H from the AD, still from we AD. consider as a DAG? Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, you can, uh, if you remove from AD, right? So, 
Yes, it is a diagonal. Yes, it is a diagonal. Yes. But if it's bidirectional, then it will not be, no sir. Yeah. Yes, I got it. Okay. So now let's quickly get into one application based problem so that you know we'll have a clear understanding of this. So this is same again. How it is being done is something written here. So I'll just skip this part. Now over here there is a question. Okay. Uh, so this is you really have to spend now prepare yourself that we are spending some five minutes for this particular question. Okay. Now Suresh needs to perform six tasks, namely P Q R S P U. Some task needs to be performed after performing a particular task. Okay. In the below table, column one shows the task and column two shows the set of tasks that can be performed only after performing the particular task. Okay. So essentially, that uh, what it means is. that q and r can only be performed when p is being performed already okay this is what it means now the question is what is the possible order in which suresh can perform the task now enter this in an alphabetical order so whatever you see this adjacency list what you are seeing here is it's basically for it's like out degree adjacencies right mm. right adjacency so start list. doing this adjacency list so could you just quickly form so what will be the approach for solving this i would say Pro, first draw the go graph go from the last one yeah you can do that way also the but in order to be like you know what Actually, i find out in degree where it is zero p and q both no q is sir, having i in i think p, we can make graph sir first Correct. so better to p. make the graph from this just make the graph and once graph is made you can perform it easily so just make the graph for this and tell me the sequence take some 3 4 minutes that's fine once the graph is made i think it's easy then so i have made the graph and what i understood that uh, p to q and r uh, there will be direct edge then q to nowhere edge r to q edge something like that sir okay we can discuss that rithik just give me uh, i just got one response till now done sir done give your response mm -hmm. So I'm not understanding, sir. How to answer this? In the graph I have made. Enter the letters in order, separated by comma. Okay, the uh, like counting, sir. You are asking counting, counting like counting number. You are asking. No. So over here, what you see is it's basically adjacency list. So mm -hmm. you must know from this adjacency list how to draw the graph. I have drawn, sir. And then next is asking let uh, enter the letters in order by separated comma. Correct. So you you just have to find out topological sequence. This is what it means. Okay. Okay. Got it. Got it. Sir, I'm getting two answers. Like, hmm. Yeah, you will get two answers. Yes. Done, sir. Done. Okay, so ten responses. So let's see what are the two answers that we are saying. P Q R S T U P. Then T U S P R Q T S P 
Plus PQR, plus PQR, okay. TPS QR, plus PQR and sup RQ. Let's see what is the thing. Okay. So first of all, as I told you, like first we have to draw this uh, graph. So I'll just skip this part and I'll di directly show you what is that graph so that we can understand this. So this is the graph we get, right? So you see this, what it was told that this is like, you know, our degree adjacency list was given. So essentially it means that task P is performed before task QR. So essentially what it means is there is a direct edge, you know, uh, connecting PQ and PR basically. So you can see that P is connected to Q and P is connected to R, right? Right? So this is what, and Q is not connected to anything. So this is something you can see that Q is not connecting to any other vertices. So basically this is like out, out degree adjacency list, right? So based on all this, now again, R, R is connected, R is connected to Q. So R is connecting to Q. Okay, so Q is blocked. Over here, then S is uh, connected to P and R. So where is S? So, you know, whenever you try to draw the graph, the best thing to do is like whatever the vertices are given, make it in a, you know, uh, some polygon shape. Okay, and then try connecting the edges. Okay, mm. so that will, you know, that will help you, you know, draw the graph much neater way. And most likely even we do the graph like that. So, you know, uh, you, uh, that will, you know, you can always come close to, you know, the, you know, the nicer representation or something. Uh, like, because you see, you can draw the graph in any possible ways. You, you know, it depends upon what alphabet where you are taking, right? So take it in an order and try to draw some kind of a polygon shape type place it them in a polygon shape type, right? And then you can just connect those edges, right? So likewise, we can see, and I hope all of you got these graph, this graph, okay? Now, once this graph is done, what is the next thing? Calculate the in-degree for all of these, right? So T has the in-degree zero, and Q, we notice that it has got an out-degree zero, right? And we notice that from T, we can either perform task S or task U, right? Right, so I can either remove, I can either remove this edge TU or TS. So this itself will tell me that there are two possible answers for this. Right, all of you agree? Mm -hmm. Right. So finding the topological sequence. So let's say uh, T is with in degree zero, and then uh, remove T from the graph and add it to the topological sequence. So this is the step we do. Right. So how do we do this? T comes to our topological sequence. And then I'm left with U and S. And why did I tell you in the very beginning that, you know, they had an in degree one and now you have these two to choose upon. You can either choose U or S because both has in degree zero, right? So it depends on you. So some of you would have, some of you has chosen S. So Tusk, PQ or something we were getting, right? So you choose U. So when you choose U, then what do you do next? This comes to your next topological sequence, U, right? U comes to our topological sequence, and then we remove this U, right? So when we remove this, what do we get? We get this, right? We get this. And now we have S with in degree zero. So this comes in our next list, that is T U S, right? And then we remove this S from this. And then you'll be left with what? P, Q, R. And with P being in degree zero, so that comes into our next list. That is, P comes over here. And then you are left with R, Q. Q and R. R is the next entry that falls in our list. And then Q, right? So what did we notice here was, this was since Q is the last thing that falls under this, right? So what did you notice from here? So the po so the task will be performed in this order. That is task Topological PQ. sequence are not unique. Yeah, that is one thing that we can take from here, right? And the order what you have given, most of you have given right order, like one of the order was right. You see this, you can even have this as the answer. That is TSU, PRQ, right? 
Yes, sir. So this is all for today's session. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Fine. So I'll Thank just you. not take sir, much time. Sir, I have you. one one Thanks, query, sir. Sir, 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 sir. Just just last minute. Uh -huh, tell me. I have one query. One of my friend is asking that if uh, they are not able to write quiz two, are they still eligible for Anthem? Quiz one they have out. Uh -huh, that is fine. Yeah. Yeah, they but still eligible. maximum 95 marks he can obtain. Correct. That In is Anthem, one thing. Right now? Yeah. Yeah. But if he perform quiz two, then maximum 100 marks, which is uh, everyone can do. But if he not perform any one quiz, mm -hmm. then maximum 95, no, 90 marks, I think, no, sir, 95, I think 90. Because of some, uh, uh... yeah, something 90 and 95, you can go and check uh, in grading assignment, there is total and there is two option in total. One option will sum up to 100 and one option will sum up to 90 and 95. Since oh. since someone just brought this topic, uh, just one clarity I wanted. It is uh, quiz two is uh, from week one to week eight, isn't it? Not just week five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, yeah actually, week one to eight. Major portion and will be from last week, term but will some be concept will be being plan. used in. This is what I just got to know. Like majorly portion what? from five to eight, but the some okay. questions they can ask from five to eight, but based on some principle or based on some concept from one to week one to four. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. I think so you that is the thing. Week. Like you have to give more emphasis to week five, six, seven, eight, and you you might even be asked questions from a week one. Sir, so sir. Like, will it be harder than quiz one? I mean, hello, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, uh, it depends, right? Like how you have prepared. Uh, it means it is similar to quiz one, or uh, difficulty level uh, level. Yeah. I would say a little difficult than quiz one. Okay, and end term will be most difficult. End term will be much easier. I will be reverse. Yeah. Uh, middle, uh, it is bell curve. In middle, there is higher. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. See, yeah. Sir, one one uh, question which I have in practice. Yes, Ajay. Yes, Hello. Yeah, Ajay, please go ahead. Sir, uh, in practice assignment question. Ajay or Ritik? Eight. Okay, Ritik. Uh, can you share? I um, mean, should I? Shall I? Or you will? Uh, tell me what. The practice assignment question number eight. There is a one option where I am getting stuck, sir. Oh, I is asking uh, about the forward and backward edges. Okay, fine. Uh, Let me just open that. Let's quickly get it done with this. Yes, yeah, so that's it. This last question only. Yeah. Uh, question number eight, right? Yeah. There is a three. Options I have selected, but the two options are correct. Question eight. Question eight. Yeah. Uh, there are two options correct. Yeah. So, so question uh, the part C. I think that uh, option C is also I'm getting somewhere. Why this is wrong, sir? Okay. So I'll just share my screen. You can just see that once. Uh, do you have the solution with you? Uh. No, simply it is a tree is given, sir. We have to just uh, figure out. Okay, just see this. You can see, right? Oh, uh -huh, yes, sir. Ah. So, no check. AC is a... Okay, this is this is not a tree. I thought it's a tree actually. Okay, fine. Okay, then fine. I thought it's a minimal tree only. Okay, thanks. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, all right then. Thank you all and good night. Thank you, sir. Good night.